We're really looking forward to hosting an integrative research conference here at London School of Theology on the 29th of July, drawing in emerging and established scholars from different parts of the globe to look at the topic, Sounds of Heaven and Earth. And today, we just wanted to start wrestling with this topic before the conference begins. And I have Dr. Rebecca Ubroy, who's an ethnomusicologist and here on, on staff at LST. Rebecca, how would you approach this topic from, from your field? Well, I, God obviously is infinite, mm. but he reveals himself to us in the finiteness of the physical realm. Um, so whether that's through creation or through the written word, through scripture, um, through the incarnation of his son coming yeah. in, in physical fleshly form. Um, so we encounter him and respond to him from the finiteness of our physical existence um, and from the particularities of our own contexts, whether that's our customs, our cultures, traditions, institutions, and so on. Um, so ethnomusicology is one of the um, disciplines that actually has something really valuable to offer to the study of, um, of human action in musical worship. You know, how do we begin to understand the choices that are made? How um, do the sounds, um, the songs, the instruments, how, do all of, how does all of that come together? Um, what informs people's choices? And how does that emerge out of, out of our own contexts? Um, so really, ethnomusicology can help us to understand that, particularly the use of ethnography, um, participant observation, you know, ways of trying to understand the social world. Um, so, yeah, that can just help us to access the meanings and understand the choices. Yeah, so really looking down to the individuals and their communities and how that, that sound is expressed. Yeah. It's brilliant. On a completely different discipline and a little bit different area of study, Chris Gray, who also teaches here in theological aesthetics, how, how would your field approach this question of sounds of heaven and, and earth? Well, from, from the perspective of theological aesthetics, the whole, the whole theme of sounds of heaven and earth um, has a very long ecclesial history. I'll give you a couple of instances. Um, we read in the Patristic Saints, uh, with regard to music, that their, their primary concern is for the creation of beautiful sounds, um, singing music that is right for our nature mm. and right for God. Um, another, another example, um, with regards to liturgical singing, from the Psalms to, through to Gregorian chant, um, we are participating in revealed reality. That mm. is the view. Mm. Um, music is given by the Holy Spirit and in which we participate and we join our voices with the angels and the saints and with the living and the dead. Wow. Big picture then, like how is this, in a sense, have have a divine nature, and music's divine nature, and also a particular context. We'd love for you to kind of come and join with us if you're a pastor, a church leader, a, a musician, and, and especially a, a scholar or a scholarly thinking musician pastor. Um, join us along with many of these who will be presenting papers and their research. We have the, the honor of having Dr. John Whitfleet, who's been a friend of London School of Theology for years. He's the director of, of Calvin Institute for Christian Worship and a leader in the areas of theology, music, and liturgy, and he'll be our plenary speaker. So join us at London School of Theology on the 29th of July as we explore this topic.